Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Anime uh, Fan Club session today. Uh, my name is Mish'al Iskander. Uh, I'll be moderating this session. Uh, so I'm an MC and a stand-up comedian from Saudi Arabia. I'm not an expert on uh, the subject of anime as much as our guests, but uh, I can say that I spent a good, good deal of my childhood pretending to be Naruto, so I think I have some idea close enough to what they're going to talk about. Um, so just to get started, any fans of anime here in the audience? Okay, great. Well, can you tell me what's your favorite anime or an anime that you like? Uh, you can just say, don't worry, we'll hear you. Cowboy Bebop? Kakuburai. Okay, Kakuburai. All right, very nice, very nice. Thank you. Anyone else want to contribute? Yeah, go ahead. What did he say? Black Clover? Okay, very good, very nice. We have some interesting selections here today. All right, so I think we're warmed up. Let me start by introducing our talented guests for today. Uh, first of all, we have uh, Fadl, uh, who's an Emirati filmmaker who was influenced very heavily by anime growing up. Uh, he started out uh, Tent Picture Productions at 2.44. Uh, currently, he's working on a new exciting animation movie, which he's directing, Cats Away, and it will be released uh, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, so Fadl is also an acclaimed author who published Kingdom of Peacocks, um, and it's about an Arabian pirate in the early fi fi 500s. Is that, does that sound right? In the 1500s, sorry. Yeah, I missed the one here. It's here. In the 1500s. So, uh, you know, if they ever make a movie version of it and you're looking for a Saudi Arabian prince, I'm available if you, when you want to cast that movie, okay? Uh, our second guest today is Ken Arto, who is a French-Japanese animator. And uh, his uh, impressive experience includes working on Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, and Demon Slayer. Uh, I think we're really privileged to have uh, someone like Ken with us today to give us insights into the key animators and what are their main duties, challenges that they face every day. Uh, I think today we have a nice blend uh, of guests from different parts of the world, different experiences, background, and different roles in the production of uh, such a product. So I think uh, I'm very excited to get started. So if you can welcome them, help me welcome them with a round of applause. How are you guys doing today? Pretty it's good. Working. Oh, yeah. Fine. <laughs> yeah. It feels strange taking the mask off, right, sometimes? Yes. Uh, yes <laughs> I should take it. Yeah, it's okay. We can get comfortable. We have a comfortable session today. Uh, so, you know, a lot of what interests, like, anime to people like me as well, people myself, is the element of, like, imagination and uh, wild scenarios. So I want to start with kind of a wild scenario, guys, if you will entertain me, okay? Let's start with an uh, offbeat question. So... Uh, my question is, if today we have a time capsule that we want to uh, keep one, one uh, anime show or movie, and this will be stored somewhere that people in 2,000 years can watch and learn about the anime culture. So I want you to think about uh, which one would you choose. No pressure, but all of humanity will stand on this <laughs> one, one that you choose. So what do you think you can pick from your brain, from your experiences you, you would uh, use? Me? Yeah, Ken. Go ahead. Uh, Sorry, Ken. First, um, I will return the question. Uh, is it an adaptation or it will be an uh, original animation? Whatever you feel like uh, represents things that you love about anime, for example. Okay. Because uh, anime is, um, have uh, quite a relationship with uh, manga because uh, when a manga yeah. is uh, getting famous, okay, we, have, we are going to make an, uh, an, an adaptation in anim animation. And the animation will be selling more manga and the people will watch more animation and buy more manga. So you have to think that the animation uh, in Japan is like a TV commercial okay. for selling the manga, so for selling the product. And uh, yeah, so, but animation is also art. <laughs> of course, yeah, exactly. So, yes, and uh, I uh, nowadays, some uh, uh, people would like to create more original animation. Of course. Uh, but uh, to do adaptation is more easy because you can sell more. So I would prefer to valorize um, original animation. Which original animation would you choose? If you can choose one maybe that inspired you and you think uh, represents a lot of what you love about anime, for example. Yeah, um, maybe it will be uh, difficult to say. Uh, I don't know if you know uh, Kon Satoshi. 
Uh, no, but maybe you can tell us what, uh, why you chose this one, for example. Uh, because uh, Ken Satoshi have a, always a turning point uh, for Japanese animation, and uh, who put uh, the animation on the realistic parts with the other fellows uh, of a Japanese animator. And he was a uh, yeah, very f amazing uh, director. And uh, I like uh, the movie uh, Tokyo Godfather. Okay, very so, nice. Um, if you didn't watch it, uh, I recommend yeah, Tokyo Godfather. Very highly rated. Uh, for the same question, what would you choose for the title? I choose the first thing that came into my mind is okay. Conan the Future Boy. Because for one, it's going to be a nice catalog for them in the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it will be. Because <laughs> I think it's the same problems and challenges that they're facing, will be, they will be facing in the future. There's a lot of nice messages there about environmental uh, things, the human relationship in that story. And above all, it was the first animation that we fell in love to in the Arab world uh, from Ghibli Studios. Oh, very nice, very nice choices. All right, so I want to go a bit more back to your own like uh, 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 careers. Uh, at one, what moment did you realize that like being involved with anime or animation was not just a hobby or passion; it can become a career? Like, when did it feel like this is something that can be my main job in life, for example? Uh, in my case, uh, well, when I was, uh, well, I'm still young, but when I was <laughs> younger. <laughs> Uh, I, well, I like, uh, I read manga, I watch anime, and uh, when it came that I was always drawing and I didn't listen too much at school, so, okay. but you have to listen to, at school. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, but I would like to more to do something with the drawings, my work, I, will, I want to touch a work who can you, you can draw. And so uh, I went to more craft, art craft schools yeah. and uh, I have learned that you also had uh, school animations and yes I also yes I'm half French half Japanese but I was born and raised in France so in France you have some animation school uh, so I yes I try to enter in uh, animation school and to learn what is animation and animation is quite a complex because uh, in fact I, you have a few images, few drawings put in one second, and you, in, so you have a, one second is like 24 frames, and you have the illusion of movements, and that uh, drawings came alive and move. So, yes, yeah, it's quite complex uh, explaining like yeah. that when you don't have an uh, image, but a good example will be this images. This is rough animation, or you put the drawings and you can put it in life and they are moving, and you have the illusion of movement. More clean animation, where you have put up more your idea, and you're putting more uh, all the details, the light, the shadows. Very interesting to see yes. this part of the process, because we only see the final thing. Yes, so yeah, it's... Um, a long process, uh, and uh, for those uh, animation you have seen, it's also my work, but also the work of the director, the lead animator, and uh, the, uh, the, you, know, the, you have just not one people, one people who do one man. There's a lot of staff who are behind that, and so for one, we say, we say a cut, a scene, you don't have one man. You have uh, so the animator, the director, the lead animator, and after you have the in-betweener, he will put the uh, clean up the anime, uh, clean up the drawings, and put the uh, the, uh, the more frames. And also uh, you have uh, the person who will put the color. And after you have the post-production. <laughs> so let me ask you. So when we see something like this. Uh, how far is it until it, we see the final product? Like in percentage, like is this now we are at stage 60% of the final product or 70%? Just for us to have a reference point as well. Um, so <laughs> it depends on the, uh, the staff and the work. But uh, production is the part which takes the more time. Um, Pre-production also can take time. So if you don't have uh, the, all the ideas and sometimes if the client is not okay, you know, correct that, please. 
Uh, so it depends with the sponsor also. So yes, uh, it depends on a lot of things. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much for sharing that insight. Uh, Father, same question about like where do you uh, at what point do you realize that, for example, getting more involved in animation or in the industry as a filmmaker, it's not just a passion now. It is. Uh, I, it can be my profession, for example. Uh, for animation, I was thrust upon this world, honestly, because the project that I'm working on right now used to be a television series. I didn't want to do an animation. I, I come from a filmmaker background. So we thought the best way to tell the story that I'm working on would be animation. That went through a lot of phases. But uh, to go back to your second part of the question, uh, how did I turn that uh, passion in my in my family's eye? This was a hobby, but in my eyes, it was more like I wanted to do that uh, as a full time. So basically, I come back from uh, I'm a kid from the 90s. So you're either an engineer or a doctor. Yeah. That's what uh, they choose you to be. So I went and studied engineering in the states, and I always I always tell them that, and it's true. It's like. The angels came to me one night. I have to put some spice in this. So <laughs> the angels came to me one night and told me, you're not good as, a, as an engineer. So I woke up one day, I was like, I can't do that. I can't do environmental engineering. I'm not an engineer. Although I was doing some good grades, it's not like I'm failing. But on the other hand, I had this camera with me and I was shooting a lot of things. I was documenting and I thought, well, maybe there's, uh, uh, there's film school which I started to learn about. There are some film schools. These things they didn't, they didn't, we weren't exposed to in the late 90s at all. Oh, we can study film. Because back then, if you are studying anything in the media, they'll, they'll tell you, oh, you want to work on TV. You want to become like a TV host. So I started learning about film school. One thing led to another. I shifted from engineering to film school. And I started like sitting in the front seat of the class. I never dreamed I'm a C student back in school. <laughs> I always was the last, not because I was bad. I always say the students with me were better, were really good. I was with <laughs> scientists. So yeah, I mean, I mean, when when I shifted uh, majors, I started realizing maybe this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I graduated. Uh, long story short, I was fortunate enough to learn that Abu Dhabi established 2454, and the things that they encouraged us to do or they wanted to do as an incubator is to uh, flourish and create this ecosystem for people to get into the film world. And this really like gave me a checklist of, okay, I'm diving in, I'm not going back. And uh, this is an interesting point. Do you think now the trend is that uh, parents are more uh, accepting towards their children going to a career like in animation filmmaking? Or do you think it's better than before or it's the absolutely. same? Absolutely. Or I maybe mean, we should ask parents that are in the absolutely. audience. Absolutely. <laughs> I think it's much easier now because they've seen results. Yeah. Before there weren't any results, you know, anyone who was in that field was a hobbyist back then, from actors to directors to writers. Back then they were all hobbyists or they came in from different parts of the region. It wasn't like people from, uh, I'm talking about Abu Dhabi here. Uh, right now, no, they're seeing results, they're seeing people in the art field, they're seeing directors, writers. This festival is part of spreading this kind of awareness and communication. We want more writers, we want more people to get into, not just for the sake of passion, but also to take that as a livelihood. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, is anyone in the audience uh, studying or wants a career in like a visual medium, like animation or filmmaking? Yeah, I'm working into the animation at the moment. Actually, uh, you were kind enough to answer some of my questions. Uh, regarding my dissertation two years ago, I emailed you and you were kind enough to answer some of the production from I'm Cats glad. Away. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah. Great to hear. Great to hear. Yeah, and good luck. Good luck with your Thank career. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think we spoke a little bit about uh, what you're doing in the industry. I think it will help give us some insights to know what are your roles like today as a key animator. Uh, in a simplified way that maybe we can connect with, with you as well and yes. as a filmmaker as well. What are the, like, your daily tasks, challenges, just to give us insights, people who are very far from the industry and don't see this, you know? Yes. Um, so I think um, when you are an animator, 
you, so you receive some offers of uh, would you like to work on this show or not, and you are totally free to say yes or not. Or you can also, oh, I want to work on this show, can I please? So, uh, is, is there a dream show that uh, you can share with us that you, if, they tell you, if they call you now and they say, Ken, we want you to join our team, you will say yes immediately? Uh, yes, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, it's a secret, so I will not tell. <laughs> but um, uh, there is, a, so yes, you have shows who I would like to work on this, so you can contact the studio, the team. And uh, or if you have uh, some connection, because when you have worked a lot of uh, for a few years now, it's a small world, so you may oh I know this person who knows this guy, he can introduce you. But uh, even uh, and oh I have worked with him, he's a good animator. You can you know, I recommend it. But uh, when you are a beginner, it's more difficult. So you have to prove yourself, uh, and so send uh, some portfolio. Sometimes do some test. And if the team say, the staff say, okay, you, you can work with us, it's a, you, know, you can start like that. Um, but uh, so yeah, so when you choose the show you want to work, uh, you have uh, so a meeting uh, with uh, the director. Okay. <laughs> and uh, the director will explain now, uh, so first you will choose maybe a scene or the director, oh, I know this animator, I would like you to do this scene because I, see you ha I have seen this scene of you and I quite like it, uh, very emotional and you are pretty good with emotion, so you, I would like to do this uh, dramatic scene, please. And uh, okay, and so uh, you have uh, some, a scene, uh, so let's exp me explain a scene. A scene can be 10 cut, five cuts, so what is a cut? Let me explain. So this is a scene, so this is one cut, you can see, and when it's turned on, it's another cut. So this is an entire scene, and for this scene, I think there is 15 cuts. And uh, to do those 15 cuts, at first I have to do a meeting with the director, who explained me what he wanted. Uh, the expression of uh, each character, the emotion, the how the movement uh, have to be, and uh, when I have uh, understand all his uh, recommendation, his request, because an animator have to answer to the request of the director. So the communication is very important with the director, and uh, because and so the director have also to communicate well, and that's why sometimes uh, uh, you have to sometimes speak the same language. If you, because if you have a between a translator, well, you can work with a translator, but you have sometimes lost information, uh, even if it's a good uh, traduction. Uh, and uh, and uh, so you, d you do your work, and you do, uh, so the rough animation, well, I will be talking about the, the more the Japanese process mm -hmm. in my case. Of course. So you do the rough animation and you send it back to the director who will check it. Um, the arm more higher, the expression more angry. And after it will go back to the lead, go to the lead animator and the lead animator will put some correction uh, for the drawings, put more on the model of the characters to harmonize all the cuts harmonize all the drawings of the characters and send it back to you and you put all the corrections, you applicate all the correction of the director and the lead animator and put all the details of each characters. And uh, uh, character can be very, how can I say, difficult because, uh, so you have some characters who have, uh, yeah. A lot of details maybe. Details, armor. And uh, yes, you have to put uh, all of those so. details. So and this is the stuff that, as an audience, we like to see, but you don't like to work on, I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know if you people some know Attack on Titan. Yes, yes, Attack on Titan. Yes, yeah. they have a lot of, uh, yes, a uh, <laughs> lot of uh, details. And it's a nightmare for the animators, basically. I they don't have a good job. It's a pain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like the show, but I don't want to work on it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a fair enough yeah. 
And um, so yeah, and uh, after, so you, this is the rough animation. We put uh, all the movements of the camera, uh, explained, and you have also in Jap Japanese process a timesheet. Uh, what is a timesheet? It's playing the timing of the process, uh, the timing of uh, uh, the movement, the camera, and so the director have also to put some correction on that. So it's very, very. Yeah, difficult. <laughs> so, uh, Ken, just for our reference, when we talk about uh, one uh, normal episode in anime series, like uh, 20 minutes, yes, uh, how much work goes behind that? From your, like, in terms of a rough estimate, like mm. hours, how long does it take for one episode, maybe? Well, um, it depends of of the st well, the stuff you have. It depends uh, of the studio. It depends uh, of the time you have and also the budget. But uh, in Japan, it takes a bit. Uh, Normally, three, four months for one episode, oh, just for the production. Production. Um, so yeah, uh, yes, three, four months. Three, three, four months for the one episode. One episode, seen. one episode, but just the production. Okay. So uh, if uh, maybe with post production, but it depends. Sometimes you have some delay, and so you have to find more times. And but uh, you have uh, the diffusion on TV. So okay, I want to ask you one more thing because you spoke about how uh, the director can come back as an animator and tell you that uh, I w like uh, the emotion was not uh, mm -hmm. right here or something. But uh, for I have a very basic understanding, maybe. But isn't all of that part of the script written? Like, how much does an animator have an influence on the scene? I don't know if my question is uh, clear, but well, because the, I understood that maybe the writing, uh, that's the writing part, mm. and the animator will just draw it or yes. animate it. And the animator can put, put his touch, but he has to respect uh, the request of the director. Because, uh, I can see uh, Father <laughs> agreeing on that uh, point. <laughs> you, because if you do, oh, I want to do like this because I have decided, no. Because uh, the, uh, you have to put, uh, like, uh, well, uh, like a movie, a real movie with a real actor. When a director said uh, to, I don't know, a movie like uh, a Jim Carrey, more this expression, or uh, play like that. He, he can improvise a bit yes, maybe around he, it. Yeah. He can improvise, but he has to answer to his request. If he's, he, the director wants a sad expression and the actor laughs, not uh, it's not what I want. So the uh, yeah, so the animator have to correctly answer and also give have a good giving a good answer, but give more, <laughs> give more that can oh you can do it like that. I didn't know. Sometimes can surprise a director. So you still as an animator have room to improvise Probably. and apply your own creativity within the vision of the director is yes, what you're saying, yes, right? Yes, and it's not easy. <laughs> 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 but I think Fadel can. Um, I yeah, yeah. encourage animators. Like uh, I, I had these discussions with them before. I, like I'm dealing with characters. Uh, the thing that I gave them was a reference, which is the actors. When we recorded the voiceover for, uh, obviously you record the voice before you do the animation. In, in terms of animation, so when we recorded the voice of the actors, I had a camera placed on their faces because they are actors. This is like a nice uh, reference for the animators in uh, different parts of the world because of COVID, we couldn't, they couldn't be with us. That was a very good reference for them to see expressions, to take from the actors, because sometimes like the animator, the actor can surprise you with a certain thing, which, okay, this works, I'd encourage that thing within the vision, of course. Yeah, of course, of course. And uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, Fadl, from your perspective, um, as more of in the director chair, what are the challenges that you would say you have to deal with? Uh, because, uh, of course, like following what uh, Ken said, you have a vision that you have to make sure everyone is following it, right? To have that stamp on your work. So how do you make sure? Because you will have a big crew, maybe hundreds of people. So how do you make sure they're all following that kind of uh, vision? Uh, Ken mentioned communication, which is really vital. I think the best thing that, or I, what I try to do at the beginning is communicate as much as I can before they even uh, hold their tool or pen. I communicate as much as I can in terms of characters. I'd encourage questions. I have this open kind of dialogue with them. 
And also I try to tell them why am I doing uh, this animation? Why is this, uh, there is such a vision? One of the challenges that I had is that one animator couldn't understand. Back in the 90s, we had these ice cream uh, tricycles. They say ice cream in different parts of yeah. Abu Dhabi. Uh, he comes from a different part of the world. He couldn't get it even if I gave him some pictures. He did it the way he saw it. And I had a lot of back and forth of them. So why aren't you doing the thing that is in the picture? This is not in how it looks in your place. This is how it looks in my place. So yes, there are sometimes things that are lost in translation. These are some of the things that I uh, face. And especially when they start during the rough animation and I see a mistake, it's like, oh, how, could, how did we miss that? Let's go back and uh, the other things are notes notes that I get from investors or notes that I get from uh, people who are funding the film. They might watch the movie they're like, no, we don't like this uh, behavior, we don't like this scene. So I have to uh, rewrite that or, and rewriting that for the lead animators under me is a nightmare. It's like whatever they worked on for the past month just goes. Yeah, uh, I think it definitely sounds more and more like a complex process. So following this, I actually have a question based on what you said. So uh, uh, also from a filmmaker or a director and from animator point of view. Now, a lot of, of obviously a lot of the shows that we like and love have different styles of animation, right? And I'm going to use one example like the show Berserk. Uh, they used to use the traditional style and the last season they switched to CGI. And a lot of people were not, uh, <laughs> I think you know what I'm saying, were not happy with that decision. So it really got, got me interested in understanding how do you decide on, because we still see examples today of modern shows, but maybe they're using the classical style of, so how do you decide the right style for your project, basically? So, yeah, and if you want to start. Mm, well, it depends a lot of things, so, because Berserk, I like Berserk. But uh, if you see the character design, the universe, the monsters, yes, uh, you know, if you want to put a, a, the same style of uh, Kentaro Miura, uh, you have a lot of work. And um, to find all those animators who can draw like that, well, nowadays it's quite difficult. So sometimes you, you go to the easy way or maybe the uh, the most, uh, oh, like that, uh, we'll, we'll have al always the same model and we'll don't have, uh, it will be always realistic. And so sometimes, oh, let's take the CG, so the 3D. But uh, in, uh, in the case of Japan, uh, in Japan industry, uh, in animation, well, the 3D is a bit, how can I say, difficult to, to put in a good way. Uh, I don't know why, maybe because uh, all the good uh, CG people are going more on video games, I think. Yep. And uh, so it's uh, the difficult part because uh, me too, were, but uh, uh, CG is very important also to 2D and 2D is very important to CG because uh, in fact, uh, um, when you have difficult cuts and you turning camera, Doing uh, in 2D animation, it, it's a pain and it takes time. And sometimes you can have difficulties and it will be oh, it's not good. And when you have 3D, you you have this help with 3D. You can put your camera when you want the models, and the 3D is here to help you for the 2D. And and you can do t something you cannot do on 2D with the 3D, and 2D can do something that 3D cannot do. So, so it's more like just to see how this style can benefit your vision yes. and your resources as well. How many resources you have, maybe the that will be... And the team, if you have a good 3D team, if you have a good leader, or if you just have a new beginner, it will be difficult. You have at least need two or three lead animators to help the beginner and to learn them, to teach them. So the stuff is very important. So nowadays, like when I see uh, my uh, senpai, senpai, so in the Japanese world, but you say so a mentor, or, or yes, mentor. Yeah. Uh, not the show. They prefer to work on people they can relate, and oh, I know him, and 
I work with him and it was a great time, I love it. And same for the animators, oh, I, I have worked with uh, this director, I like his vision and to work with him, he understands me, I understand him, so if he calls me, I will go to his uh, next project. I guess because it's a very collaborative process, it's yes. good to have people you like and you like working yes. with because yes. you will work with them a lot. So Yes, because when uh, we talking to do like a movie, take can take it two, three years. So yes, if you work with the uh, same people with two, three years, it's better if you have a good communication and a good, uh, um, uh, good. Uh, how can I say, uh, you can, you can uh, appreciate uh, each of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. It's, it's, uh, it's a good point. Um, all right, I wanna switch uh, gears a little bit and talk about uh, streaming platforms. So. Uh, now, uh, I think it's very clear that streaming platforms are favoring having more and more anime content. Things like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, we're seeing a lot. So, I, from a person in the industry, what's your perspective? Is it something that you're happy about or are you uh, not so like, happy, you're not cautious about? Because you're in the industry, so you would have a different uh, perspective on it. So, maybe, uh, Fadl, you can start. Uh, what is your general sense about streaming platforms and having this much content? I think, uh, obviously, I'm positive, I'm happy. The more work we see from different parts of the world, the more exposure we have, different nationalities, different stories, we're just sharing them. And there's this platform, it's like in the grab of like, it's, it's just like extension of our hands, those mobile phones, so everything is there. And the nice thing about it is that it gives us the chance and it also puts a challenge for us in, there is no excuse for us not to tell our stories now to the world. Everything is there, why couldn't we? Uh, so I think it's a very great opportunity. I see it. Uh, um, I know there's a lot of talk about people spending a lot of time on social media platforms and even <laughs> on different Netflix programs. And this is driving away uh, from where I come from, which is the theater, cinema, and uh, you know the classical way of watching a movie. But on the other hand, if this is the new norm, if this is how the new generation is looking at it, we have to adapt and jump on that right away. I'm really glad because it's easier for me even as a filmmaker slash producer to pitch my ideas. Back then it was very, 10 years ago, it was very difficult for me to pitch an animation film. They thought this was for kids and oh, are you doing it for Ramadan yeah, and yeah. all that kind of things, questions that are... are of, but now, I mean, they have an idea, oh, okay, so this is for Netflix, this is... The, the, the communication language uh, changed. Yeah, because uh, I'm from the generation that we only used to get it from Space Tune. I don't know if anyone else knows what I'm talking about, you know. So we had it, like, uh, you can watch one episode per week, and it was Pokemon at 4.30 p.m., I remember that. And if you miss it, it's gone. So you need to make time and make sure. I mean, compared to now on Netflix, you can watch, a, and I think most of us watch a full season in one or two days, and. You have that much access, and uh, Ken, how, how do you uh, feel um, as well? Like Fadel, I think uh, Netflix or those platforms is a good, good thing, and also to uh, people who couldn't watch the most of uh, uh, famous show uh, that are quite now a bit old, we'll say 10, 20 years ago, but uh, for younger people who Oh, I would like to watch it, and how can I watch it? Oh, I have to buy DVDs, or yeah, you have all the show on Netflix like Cowboy Bebop, uh, yeah. Evangelion, uh, more ancient... Um... I, I'm glad you mentioned Cowboy Bebop because the reason why I was telling you uh, why some people might not be happy with it because there's a trend of making live action adaptations, yes, 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 yes. right? Uh, I don't know if anyone has seen the Death Note yeah. live adaptation or Avatar. So there is, I know it's not on Netflix, but it, there's a trend that they're making mm. and mostly they are not critically well received, mm. right? There's something that is missed when they make a live action yes. version of the movie. So that's what I wanted to hear from your side as well, is that do you think this is uh, something that they should not consider as live action? Or what is it that live action is missing that anime is you know, providing to people? I think when I'm talking with friends, uh, animators and also directors, um, maybe it's a bad habit to, to do a film live because it's like, oh, this anime show had, uh, was like, quite famous, and maybe if we put an adaptation, it would be great, and can, I don't know if they're thinking more money or not. Yeah. But uh, for me, it's like, okay, now this anime, okay, have a, 
uh, let's do in live animation, it will be more serious. Because anime is, uh, is for kids, so let's put in live action now uh, for uh, uh, more adult people. Uh, like, like uh, it's uh, just, for me, uh, like a live, anim live adaptation is like uh, anime is not a good medium, and uh, let's put it on the higher medium, like live, ac live action, and uh, I'm a bit sad about that. And uh, also, I would like to add something about the uh, platforms. So it's a good thing for old shows, but uh, I think it's a bit um, uh, for the new shows. Uh, you have uh, all the episodes in once, and I think it's a bit sad because I think it's a bit killing the show. You mean the binge watching uh, yes. episode? Yes, and all I, of it in one night. You know, I think uh, the way if you have one episode per week may a, g a good chance, a potential to have a more uh, to appreciate the show, to talk with people. Oh, did you watch this episode? And oh, and did you watch this week of this episode? Did you like it? And to have more more hype, I will say. To I I I, I totally understand what you're saying because, because you have time to digest the episode. Yes, uh, because if you have <laughs> a twelve episode, per, so one episode per week, so it will be three four months at least. And like this, you can you can. The, the, the series will be alive three, four months. As you put uh, all the episodes and you watch uh, one weekend, okay, finish, next. <laughs> what, what do you guys think? Uh, raise your hand if you like it, uh, uh, the old way of an episode per week. Who likes it? Okay, and it, raise your hand if you like binge watching everything in one or two nights. Also, I like binge watching also. <laughs> 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 but uh, I like bit watching for old shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, but, but I completely understand because uh, I, I get your point. But where I would disagree with you, the issue is when you wait one week for the next episode, and then the episode is fully flashbacks. So you feel like, or it's a canon. You yes, know? yes. So you feel like you've wasted a week without betrayed. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Fadl, uh, uh, what, which format do you think, or is it okay with the current format, or do you think it's too much? For the platforms, you mean? Yeah, like binge watching, having a full season ready. Honestly, I'm uh, the only anime show. If you're talking about animation, the only anime show I try to watch, but it's really I, I I'm a binge watcher. I'm a marathon watcher. Okay. If I'm gonna watch the one thing, <laughs> uh, I'm a big fan of Castlevania, the game, not the animation, and. Because there was always this talk uh, that they're going to do it in a movie and it's like going up and down with this project. Anyways, Netflix jumped in and they produced it. So I tried to watch it, but it really took away that imagination that I lived with as a kid playing Castlevania. This is not the Castlevania that I know, so I stopped. I couldn't watch like the rest of it. It's not like it's bad, but... Um, other platforms, or sorry, other other projects, the only thing that I hear about is when I sit around friends and they keep talking about shows, it's like, whoa, animation is really growing. I need to catch up. <laughs> do, do you think animation specifically, or anime in general, uh, is one of the mediums that is difficult to adapt into live action compared to like books or other forms? Because I feel like with, uh, personally, animation, the the, the style is so vivid, you already have an image in your mind, whereas if it's a book, it's still like a description that maybe they can make a life. Do you think that's, that's the reason why we see a lot of unsuccessful adaptations like Cowboy Bebop and, uh, you know, the ones we've mentioned, Avatar and stuff like that? It's funny because in the 80s, okay, I, I just spilled my age. In the <laughs> 80s, I watched The Hobbit as an animation cartoon. And, to, you know, back then it was like, oh, okay, that's nice. You know, it was a story about the Hobbit going and there's the string, or everything else. And then, like, 20 years later, I watched Lord of the Rings. Obviously, there's no comparison, of <laughs> course. Yeah, I mean, when I, so I went back to answer a question. I went back and was like, what happened to that show that I saw in the 80s? Let me look for it on YouTube, which is another good thing about these platforms. You can find things that you saw oh, in yeah, your yeah. childhood. You think back then it was a nightmare, but it was, it's true. Then I watched it, I was like, oh my God, how did I watch that? You know? <laughs> so it really depends like the time when it was released. Maybe things that we're watching now, 20 years later, we laugh. Like, What's the style, you know? And I hope it's not all films. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, okay. Uh, Ken, do you have anything you want to add about uh, uh, the point that we just spoke about? No, it's okay. I'm fine. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Uh, so let's, I just want to leave. We have uh, a few minutes before we close the session. I wanted to just leave it open if there's a Q, for a Q&A session. If there's the mic still uh, with you guys. Um, or anybody who wants to sing. Sorry? Sing. Sing if anyone. So if anyone wants to, if they have a question for our guests or a comment overall uh, or how they feel, um, anyone wants to add anything from the audience, we want to give you that chance. Yeah, there's someone in the back. Uh, what's your name? What's your name? So my name is Amir. Okay. And my question is to you, Mr. Ken. So you've worked on part five of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, right? So what was it like animating such a fast-paced anime? Because there are a lot of like scenes, and it can be really fast-paced. So how did you, throughout the whole process of the whole part, what was the, what was your, you know, your feelings about all of it? Okay, uh, for part five, so... <laughs> Ken is ready with material for every question, guys. <laughs> uh, for part five, this part, uh, so I have wa walked twice on part five. And so this one was my second participation. And uh, I liked the way of, of the, this fight with the brutality versus Pucci. Pucci, no, it's not Pucci, it's Pesci, sorry. Um, and... Uh, the way, well, it's quite detailed, and the way of the, the guy is fighting with a fish, kingfish, I don't know how you say. Uh, and uh, yeah, Jojo is uh, quite have a lot of details, and uh, what I liked is was the rhythm of uh, the, the cut, and uh, the, yeah, so how they, because I had also the manga next to me, and also the, and the storyboard, and uh, the storyboard is a part very important because it's the skeleton of the show. And if you have a manga or um, a book, uh, you, you have an adaptation, it starts by the, well, also the script, but, if you, but you have to, if, when you put it in drawings, the first step uh, for a film will be the storyboard. And the storyboard, um, if you, we explain it, it will be like a comic, some, like a manga, but we take technical notes of cam moving camera, action, and uh, so there is a, it's a very important step of interpretation by the storyboarder. And uh, so, so the, mm, the storyboarder can be the director, or the can be another storyboarder who the director explain his request uh, for the storyboarder. And uh, so when I have a, uh, see the storyboard, I, yes, I, I like this part and I wanted to work on it. And uh, yes, it starts like that. And after, at the same time, I was uh, working on My Hero Academia. So it was a bit painful because I was on two projects <laughs> and working on two projects is a bit uh, hard. <laughs> but uh, and it, like you see, uh, judges have uh, quite a lot of uh, lines. And yes, yes. I think let's give a round of applause to the animators who put so much work <laughs> into the product that we see and we love so yes. much. <laughs> but yes, but like I said, uh, it's not only a work of one man, it's a, a teamwork, team, it's, a it's team. very, very important to put it in mind, it's a teamwork. If you watch the credits, uh, if you just l look at the part of animators, for at least one episode of uh, anime, you li li list, uh, at least have 10, 15, or 20 animators, depends on, uh, but sometimes you have monsters, just one animator, he have done all the episodes. Wow. We call them one man army. <laughs> So, so, Ken, let me ask you, when you're done animating something that went to production, already released, afterwards at home, do you go and watch it and say, yeah. I, I did this? Yes. And because um, well, this is a TV show. When it's a TV show, uh, you, so it will be a broadcast, a, a TV, uh, on this time. And I work hard to finish my cut, to respect the deadline. <laughs> 
uh, so like that, you, everybody can watch it at this time. <laughs> so yeah, I want to watch it at this time also, <laughs> because uh, it was a meaning to respect these, those deadlines, those sleepless nights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Um, all right, we'll take uh, another question. Yeah. Uh, we have right here. Uh, what's your name? Thomas. And what, what's your favorite character of all time? Favorite anime character? Asta. Okay, well, very good. As okay, all right, what's your question? How old were you guys when you did the, uh, your first anime? How old were you when you did your first, maybe, big project? or pr Big project? Oh, I, um, well, uh, maybe the f big project I worked with was on Dragon Ball. And I was uh, 26 or 27. Yes. Uh, uh, how old are you? 10. I think he's counting how many years he has left until <laughs> yes. he needs to work on a project or something. Yeah. Actually, uh, age is doesn't matter because uh, you have a uh, lot of talents and some people who are more younger than me are more skillful than me. And uh, people who start animation at uh, 30 and then getting very good. It's uh, the way of how you learn, how did you learn animation with the more mentors and how you can assimilate and how you can, it's also hard work. But uh, yes, it's if you, you have to understand, you have to learn and you have to draw every day. But uh, age, the age is not important for animation. Uh, Father, same question, how old were you when you... Uh, just to uh, add on that point, also the tools are available and the software is now much better than before. So yeah, that gives them a great advantage. Uh, my first animation uh, was a short that I did for the university. I think I was in my 20s, if it's I say university, or maybe even teens. It was, back then, there was a disease called mad cow disease. <laughs> yeah. So I did an animation about mad human disease. It's about two cows, <laughs> a mother cow and, a, and her son. They're watching a war happening uh, above the cliff, and the, the mother is saying to the calf or the, her son, this is, they call us mad cow disease, but what you see out there is mad human disease. You Can know? we watch it on YouTube? Yeah. I think... I, I think I failed that class. <laughs> <laughs> so basically the answer is you can't waste time. You need to start now on your animation career. <laughs> <laughs> Any, uh, you had a question? Yeah, I think we'll take it. Yeah. Well, uh, what's your name? Uh, my name is Ankriti. Okay. Um, to Mr. Ken, um, how, are there any underrated anime shows that you worked upon before? Sorry, can you? Uh, sorry, I, I, can you say it again? Are there any underrated anime shows that you like worked on or animated on? Underrated. Is there any shows that maybe were not as well known, but like you worked on and you were really, it was maybe an exciting project? But yeah, see, Nick has material to show you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, He's the, ready, guys. He's ready. Um, the case of Decadence, uh, I don't know if you know uh, uh, Tachikawa yuzuru san So Tachikawa yuzuru san is a director. And he's the director of uh, Mob Psycho, Mob Psycho 100. And uh, he's, he's, he's the original show. And uh, I didn't know at all a bit uh, of the show, but uh, I know it was a uh, Tachikawa yuzuru san and it's a director I like to watch his show. And so I wanted to, uh, this once to work with him. And uh, yes, I could work with him and I was very happy. And uh, I had another request to, to work with him. So I don't know if I will have time to work with him again. But uh, yes, uh, and yes, so this is, was uh, the, the cut I have did for him. Movements of animation of a character who uh, move on the sky and getting a bit crazy. <laughs> Very interesting. Like that. Um, all right, I think we have time for one last question before we close the session. Yeah, please, sir. Um, your name? My name is Usama. Uh, I can relate to what Fadil said. I watched The Hobbit in the 80s, and I studied <laughs> engineering in the 90s. And one of the things that I, uh, one of the impressions I have is it's very difficult to cut it in the arts, in animation, in filmmaking. How is it? How, how did you find it then? Is it easier now to really make it 
as a career? It's, it, it, it was a challenge, honestly. Thank you. That's a very good question. It was a challenge because um, I was thinking, I was, I was more on the creative side. And when you want to like operate that as a business, you need to hire the dream team or find the dream team to continue that. And that was a challenge that I was blessed to have a very great team to start with when I founded uh, my company at 2454. But the challenge still remains is we are still trying to establish an industry here in the UAE. I'm talking about film, animation. TV, okay, TV is doing really good, but I mean, film and animation, we are inventing the wheel. I'm very blessed and proud to be part of that uh, movement that's happening now. We are like in our 20th year. We've been through ups and downs. Uh, sometimes there is 100% uh, focus on, on thriving this career, and then suddenly, for one reason or another, it just, there is a pause in that because other things come into place which uh, takes us back to, to back in the line again. So these things, the patience really is something, perseverance, you need to have that. Uh, the challenge is there, it's still there, I'm still even, but um, what keeps us going is that at the end of the day, like I thank God I'm, I don't work in an office job. <laughs> Um, uh, Ken, uh, same, uh, same question, How do you think now, like career-wise, uh, is it easier uh, because of access, do you think, for someone uh, to be in the arts or in this kind of industry? Well, uh, now we have internet mm. and you have digital software, so you can work uh, with a person who is in France, in America, in Mexico, in Philippines, and it's, okay, it's worldwide. So if you have a pipeline, so a pipeline, if we use this soft, we have to put the name of each layer like that, or you have to respect it. And to, to, to the, the workflow can be smoother, easier for each person like that. The director has the cut and he can correct it more easily. And so the pipeline is very important. And so it depends on some uh, depends on countries, but uh, sometimes people are using TV Paint, uh, others are using Flash, Clip Studio, Toon Boom. Uh, in my case, I'm using more TV Paint or Clip Studio. I don't know about you, Fadel. Toon Boom. Toon Boom, yeah. And uh, most of, I think, Euro, Euro, Europe and America are using uh, Toon Boom. And Euro, France, is, France, Europe, using sometimes TV Paint. Japan. Clip Studio. <laughs> Clip Studio. <laughs> uh, I guess just to summarize it in a way also uh, from what Fadal said earlier is that I think the mindset now changed that animation or anime is not just intended necessarily just for children content and can also have deep themes, emotions, stories that I think anyone at any age can enjoy, you know? Yes. Like a lot of times I think even I would go back and watch Pokemon or something and you still feel that sense of excitement when you're watching it. It does not changed and I think that makes it a bit uh, timeless. Yeah. So um, unfortunately we cannot uh, take any more questions mainly because uh, Ken doesn't have any more material so I, I don't know if we can use any <laughs> or you have any more. <laughs> uh, he has more if you have any questions. <laughs> okay. Can use it as closing credits. Yeah, it's, it's good to, to keep it uh, in the background uh, for the closing of the session. But uh, really I want to uh, thank you again uh, to my guests for uh, their time today. Uh, mainly, I want to thank you guys, the audience, for showing up here. Uh, the AV team for supporting us. Please give them a round of applause and helping us. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for coming. The volunteers, our main sponsor, Emirates Airline, and founding partner, Dubai Culture. Our parent organization, Emirates Literature Foundation. And uh, our amazing guests for giving us a lot to learn, a lot of insights. Uh, so thank you so much, and uh, thanks again for coming, and hopefully we'll see you in the upcoming sessions as well. Take care and have a good night. Thank you for thank coming. You. Thank you.